Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, first, some items that I want to uh, discuss, and then we'll get into covering some material. The um, link for WebAssign is right here. Uh, you should have access to that on Monday. Now, once you get in, since I can't uh, view it myself, um, I'm just going to have to refer to it. You'll see the assignments on here that you're to do. And um, I'll put out another video um, either either Monday or Tuesday on uh, some, some more details on that. But what I want to show now is down in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see a uh, link for the textbook. This is probably one of the most common uh, questions that I get in the first uh, day or two of a course is how do I how do I see the ebook? Well, down here, if you click this link, well, that's a little disappointing. This is typically not what you'll see. <laughs> um, let me change that to ask. Okay, this is what's common for you to see when you first get to this page. Um, it says visit this once Flash has been installed. So people go there and flash, uh, they install the Flash player, which is free. You shouldn't have to pay for it. And then they click here to continue. And if you click there to continue, it doesn't do anything. Um, the reason why is because Flash is not allowed. If you click the little um, lock right here, you might see Flash here. Probably not. Uh, but if you do, you simply do the drop down and you change it to allow. Now, if you don't see Flash there, if you come down to site settings, you'll see uh, Flash in the list here. And uh, again, when you see the flash, you click the allow. And uh, at this point, if you close this tab, click reload. Now you wouldn't have to close the tab if you did it right here. If you change this this option, if I change that to ask, uh, close that. He said just click reload. I don't close the tab. Let me do it one more time. Flash and then allow and then reload. Now this is Google Chrome. Uh, every every different browser you'd run across has some way to um, oh, monitor, uh, stop Flash from playing. Uh, so I wouldn't say that this is going to work on every uh, browser. Probably not. Uh, but the same concept does. You gotta enable Flash in order for you to use it. Then at this point you can um, click here to expand it and it's just a just an ebook, same same as if you had the book in your hand. Okay, that's WebAssign. You'll see down here there'll be assigned readings. Um, you'll see a discussion down here. You'll see uh, various assignments. Um, oftentimes, hear from people. How, how should I? go about um, preparing for the week. If I was doing it, then I would um, spread out over every day. This is not something you can wait and do all on weekend. Uh, for like example, do it all on Sunday or, or think you're going to do it all on Saturday and Sunday. A lot of material to do that with. It's best to uh, spread it out. Now I know it may not be for you to work every, every day on the material. Yeah, I heard somebody. Hi, Gary. Can you hear me? Put your mouse over the bar top 
and it should drop down and you uh, can pick an audio option then uh, click uh, connect it says something like connect by the computer I'm gonna my end I'll try to unmute you in case you're muted. Okay, all participants are unmuted. Um You may not have a you may not have a microphone, so I'll I'll go ahead and continue on. But again, just uh, you put your mouse over to the bar top if you are hearing me. And you should see an audio option there. If you don't see an audio, you might have to do a more. Um, so on mine, since I've already picked a, picked a microphone, um, then I mine just says mute. Okay. This down here talks about the different assignments uh, that you can do. And uh, you notice that there's, at least in this first week, there's um, five assignments and then there's uh, one unit test. Um, if you do one a day, then uh, you can, um, now some of them have different due dates, so you have to check on that. But if you spread that out, since it's, it's uh, not not bad. But again, if you try to do it all in one day, then it could be um, can be extremely challenging. Now the um, discussions are here, and it talks about when you should have your original discussion in. Uh, it should be on uh, Wednesday, um, according to this, and then respond two peers minimum. Uh, initial peer response is due Friday, and then you uh, throughout the weekend uh, remain engaged. Uh, with the discussion. Let's see if I click this uh, unit one discussion here and you'll see out here um, where you we can create a, a thread. So you click create thread, put your name on it and then you can respond to others. The um, faculty and course info Here's where you'll see a grading rubric. Now, I love rubrics. They're fantastic um, because they, they tell you exactly what's um, being graded upon. Uh, so like for this example, if I click this, this will come down and give me an idea of what's expected. And if I want to achieve a certain score, then I just have to read it to see what's uh, needed. Now here's the right in mechanics. Uh, student posts uh, each set out, uh, the students posts each set out a well-developed thesis that establishes a clear, fully supported purpose, uh, including logical transitions that move the reader easily through the argument with a strong voice, correct grammar and spelling. Uh, so again, don't have uh, grammar mistakes. You see here they talk about the different mistakes. Um, if the evidence re presented requires a citation, a correct APA formatted in-text citation and references present. Now, I find the best one to use is Purdue's website. So if you're trying to figure out how to um, do your APA uh, citation and reference, uh, Google uh, Purdue APA OWL, O-W-L. And um, fantastic uh, examples they give out there. I'm not very good with APA myself, so I go out there and that's that's what I use as my resource. Um, anyway, that's the rubric. 
And, um, let's see if there's anything else here. Go back to Unit 1. And now we'll, um, we'll start talking about the material here. Oh, there's YouTube videos I'll put out here to help uh, supplement this. These are our learning objectives. Order and compare integers and use absolute value symbols. Um, add, subtract, multiply, and divide different forms of integers and rational numbers, including decimals, fractions, and percents. So let's talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> now this I'm going to call, let me make this a little bit bigger actually. We'll call this uh, combining numbers. <clears throat> this is where you got positives and negatives. You guys, two cases. Case one, signs are the same, both positive, both negative. In this case, um, first thing you're going to do is ignore signs. Then, you're going to, um, I'm not sure why it keeps going over like that, uh, add the numbers, and then the sign of your answer is the original sign. Case two, signs are different. You can ignore the signs, subtract the larger number, or subtract the smaller number from the larger number, and sign of your answer is the original sign of the larger number. Let's take a look at some examples of that. Assuming I have my tablet running, maybe I don't. <clears throat> okay. Let me get my tablet running. say I have negative 3 plus 5. Oh, and I should, um, I should mention, let's see here, uh, Gary's gone. I should mention that there's a chat feature. Uh, I don't think I can see it on my end. So here, one's negative, one's positive. So there are different signs. So this says we ignore our signs. So we've got three and five. Subtract smaller number from larger number. Five minus three gives us two. And sign your answer is the original sign of the larger number. Our larger number was five, which originally was five, or pot five, which was positive. So we're gonna have positive two. Now if I add this, negative 7 plus 3. Um, again, the signs are different, so we're still case 2. Uh, we'll ignore our signs, so we got 7 and 3. Subtract smaller number from larger number. 7 minus 3 is 4. Sign of your answer is original sign of larger number. Our larger number was 7, which originally was negative. So our answer is going to be negative 4. Now let's look at one with the other case. And I don't think of this as um, adding or subtracting. I think of it as combining numbers. I think it helps. Uh, the book uh, goes over um, mathematically what does this mean. Um, and you can definitely read that and, and so forth. But it's just rules to, to follow. 
This is case one. Signs are the same. They're both negative. Negative 2 and negative 8. So that says we're going to ignore our signs. So we've got 2 and 8. We're going to add the numbers. 2 plus 8 gives us 10. And sign of your answer is the original sign. They both originally were negative, so our answer is going to be negative 10. And that would be our answer. Now, along the way, I'm going to erase this. Along the way, you'll have um, some shortcuts. And the shortcuts look like this. If you got a negative, negative, and I'll actually put a number in here, 5. You have to have a single, single number in here, or a single variable. If you got a negative, parentheses negative, that becomes a positive. So it becomes a plus 5. If you have a negative parentheses positive, that becomes a negative. So that's negative 7. If you got a positive negative um, uh, positive parentheses negative, then that gives you a negative. And if you got a positive and a positive, that's going to give you a positive. Really easy to know when to use these because if the signs are the same, it's positive. If the signs are different, it's negative. Where you'd see this at is before you would uh, use those steps I just gave you, let's say we had a problem looks like this, negative 7 minus a negative 2. Before I would uh, go to um, these two cases, I'd first apply my shortcuts. Notice here we got a negative, parentheses negative. From our first uh, shortcut here, that becomes positive. So this becomes negative 7 plus 2. Then we... Um, we follow our, our cases. This is uh, case two. Signs are different. We ignore our signs. So we got seven and two. You subtract the smaller from the larger. Seven minus two is five. And sign a larger number, which is seven, uh, which originally was negative, is going to be the sign of our answer. So negative five is our answer. Now for multiplication and division. You multiply and divide just like normal. The only thing you have to keep track of is the signs. If you got a negative times a negative, that's going to give you a positive. If you have a negative times a positive, that's going to give you a negative. If you have a positive times a negative, that's going to give you a negative. And if you have a positive times a positive, that'll give you a positive. Now for our divide. You got a negative, divide by negative, and I'll put this in fraction form because that means division. That's going to give us a positive. If you have a negative, divide by a positive, that's going to give us a negative. If you have a negative, divide by positive, negative. And if you have a positive, divide by positive, that's going to give you a positive. Fairly easy to remember. Same principles as shortcuts. If the signs are the same, it's always positive. An example. If I'm taking negative 7 times negative 2, you multiply like normal. 7 times 2 is 14. And a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So that would be a positive 14. So we'd get 14 as our, as our answer. Now, our, uh, I skipped over the first learning objective, so I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, that's the first part of this uh, second learning objective. But then it talks about rational numbers, which is decimals, fractions, and percents. So let's talk about those a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, 7 fourteenths. And our instructions here, I won't write it out, but we want to simplify this, reduce it. When you're talking about a fraction, that means that you want to um, take a look at the top and bottom. 
and you look for the largest number divided in the top and bottom. Well, these are both divisible by 7. 7 divided by 7, and 14 divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 14 divided by 7 is 2. It's one half would be our answer. If you struggle with fractions, unless you're going to certain areas, going to nursing, you should uh, definitely know how to do fractions by hand. And um, if you struggle with fractions, I can point you out to a video. Um, I may have already put it out there, actually, uh, for fractions. But if you're not going into an area that requires a, um, you don't know how to do fractions by hand, um, calculator is a fantastic tool for this. This is a T83, T84. And if I'm wanting to simplify 7 fourteenths, I do 7 divided by 14, enter, and I get a decimal. Whenever you get a decimal on TA3, TA4, you do math, enter, enter. And that reduces it to one half. Every um, scientific calculator that I can think of has a fraction capability on there. You may have to Google it and see. Don't try to use buttons I just showed you, like on a Casio or, or another version of a TI, TI calculator. Um, but if you Google it, you'll see how to do that. Again, don't sit there and struggle with fractions. Uh, for the most part, I want you to focus on the algebra, not the fractions. Now, if I had a little bit harder one, 20 over 24. Sometimes you can see what their um, divides into them. Um, sometimes you can only see uh, maybe the smallest number divides into them. Like maybe, maybe you can't see what both divides into both these, but you can see they're both divisible by 2. So you start there. You divide top part by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Then at that, that point, you realize that oh, they're still divisible by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So our answer would be 5, 6. Now let's talk about uh, multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions. What you do is you first simplify as much as you can. If you can divide a number on top and a number on the bottom by the same number, then do so. They do not have to be in the same fraction. When I say number on top, I'm talking about the numerator. When I say number on the bottom, I'm talking about the denominator. Then you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. Now you shouldn't have to do any simplifying at that point if you've done a good job of number one. So for example, if I got uh, 10 over um, 18 times 27 over um, 12. Well, pick a number on top, number on the bottom. 10 and 12. Those are both divisible by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we got 5 18 times 27 over 6. They don't have to be uh, in the same fraction, but they can be. You see here, I got 26 and 7. Or twice, 27 and 6, sorry. Those are both divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So I get 5 18 times 9 over 2. Now here I got 9 and 18. They're both divisible by 3, but actually they're both divisible by 9 also. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. We get 5 over 2 times 1 over 2. Now you might look at this and think, okay, there's two pair of twos, but they're both on the bottom. Uh, the guideline on this is that one has to be on top, one has to be on the bottom. 
So I can't simplify this anymore, so I go to step two. It says multiply the top parts together. Five times one is five. And multiply the bottom parts together. Two times two is four. So our answer would be five fourths. Again, the calculator will do this uh, uh, nicely for you. So if I plugged in, I press clear a couple times, clear the screen. 10 divided by 18 times 27 divided by 12. Let's try that again. Divided by 12. Enter. We get a decimal. And then you do math. Enter, enter. I know this is in proper fraction form, but that's what we typically leave it in in algebra. So 5 fourths is fine. We don't have to rewrite it as 1 and 1 fourth or 1.25. Now let's talk about division. So I got 10 over um, 30 divided by 5 over uh, 9. Now I'm picking specific uh, topics here to cover. I'm not going to cover every topic because just isn't time to do that. Um, but I'm going to pick the, part of the topics I figure you uh, may struggle with most. And fractions is one of the areas people struggle with most. Um, so if you're wondering why is, it, why is he uh, picking and choosing, well that's the reason why. Um, so for dividing fractions, one, you uh, flip the fraction following the division symbol. and rewrite the symbol as multiplication. We never actually divide, we immediately rewrite as multiplication. Then step two, simplify as much as you can. If you can divide a number on top and a number on the bottom by the same number, then do so. And step three, then you'll multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. Okay, so 10 over 30. Before we do anything, we immediately rewrite multiplication. So division becomes, uh, division symbol becomes multiplication, and the 5 ninths becomes 9 over 5. You take the reciprocal of it, you flip it. Top goes bottom, bottom goes the top. Then you want to simplify. Again, we look for a number on top, a number on the bottom. 10 and 5 are both divisible by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we get 2 over 30 times 9 over 1. And then we got 9 and 30. Those are both divisible by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So that gives us 2 tenths times. 3 over 1. 2 tenths. 2 and 10 are both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's going to give us 1 over 5 times 3 over 1. Nothing left to simplify, so I'll multiply the tops together, multiply the bottoms together. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 1 is 5. Now the trick to plugging these into your calculator is when you're doing division of fractions, you typically put parentheses around each fraction like this. That's how you put it in. Okay, so if I got uh, beginning parentheses, 10 divided by 30, closing parentheses, divided by, beginning parentheses, 5 divided by 9, closing parentheses, enter, and I get 0. 0.6, and I do math, Enter, enter. And that gives me my three fifths. And that's on uh, dividing fractions. Okay, let's take a look at adding and subtracting fractions. Step one get a common denominator.
And the first thing we do uh, to get a uh, common denominator is to find the LCM of all the denominators. We then rewrite each fraction with that new denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by a number. And then step two, we add or subtract the tops and put it into a single fraction with our new denominator. And then step three is to simplify the fraction if necessary. Not all these steps are necessary. Okay, let me clear this off. And let's say I got, um, let's see, 1 6 plus um, 2 6. Now you might be uh, tempted to go ahead and reduce the 2 6 to 1 3rd, but our goal is to get a common denominator. So step one, get a common denominator. They already have a common denominator, so that works out good. Step two, add or subtract tops and put it into a single fraction with their new denominator. So one plus two is three, so we've got three over six. And then our last step is to simplify this. Well, top and bottom both of those by three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. So our answer will be one half. Now let's take a look at a little bit more challenging one. 1 over 20 plus 1 over 24. Now again, you could just plug this straight in your calculator to get your answer, and that'd be fine. But I'm showing you how to do it by hand. So step one, we want to get a common denominator. And it says we need to find the LCM of all the denominators. Now we have some numbers that are prime. Our prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and sometimes 13. You actually got an infinite number of primes, but probably 95% of math problems revolve around these first numbers here. Okay, so to find the LCM of 20 and 24. Step 1 is we want to do the prime factorization of each number. And if you're never good with prime factorization, you can do your tree breakdown. So I'll start with a 20. And I go with my first prime, which is 2. And I see if it's divisible by 2. And it is 2 times 10. 2 is prime, so I circle it. I'm still on my first prime, which is 2. And 10 is divisible by 2. 2 times 5. 2 is prime, so I circle it. And 5 is actually prime, so I circle it also. So 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Now our other number is 24. If I do my tree breakdown, 24 is divisible by 2. 2 times 12. 2 is prime, so I circle it. Uh, 12 is uh, divisible by 2, also. 2 times 6. 2 is prime, so I circle it. And 6 is divisible by 2. 2 times 3. 2 is prime, so I circle it. And 3 is prime, so I circle it. So we'll have 3 2's and 1, 3. Now for our LCM, we'll look at each prime, and we're looking for the greatest number of that prime on a single line. Let's see what I mean by that. Let's we'll start with a 2. There's two 2's here. There's three 2's here. So the greatest number of 2's on a single line is three of them, right here. So we're going to have three 2's. I go to my 3 then, and I'm looking for the greatest number of 3's on a single line. I got none here, I got one here, so greatest number three is in a single line is one. Then I'll go to my next prime, which is five. And I got one five here, no fives here, so greatest number five is in a single line is one. So we got two, four, eight, times five is forty, times three is 120. Now, um, we're at the step where we're rewriting each fraction of that new denominator by multiplying top and bottom by a number. You have to think about what did you multiply your old denominator by to get your new one. 
Well, I multiplied 20 by 6, so I have to multiply the top part by 6. The mathematical rule is whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. This I multiplied by 5, I think. Yeah, 5. So I multiply the top part by 5. So 1 times 6 is 6. We got 6 over 120 plus 1 times 5 is 5 over 120. At that point, we're ready for step two, add or subtract tops and put it into a single fraction with a new denominator. Six plus five is 11 over 120. Now this doesn't simplify, so that would be our answer. Now let me, um, let me show you another one, a subtraction. Uh, let's see, um, 5 over 36, 5 over 54, 1 over 54. And I, I said subtraction, but I wrote down addition. Okay, there we go. So we need to get a common denominator. Well, let's find the LCM of 36 and 54. If I did my tree breakdown, 36 is 2 times 18. 2 is prime size circlet. 18 is 2 times 9. 2 is prime size circlet. 9 is 3 times 3. And both of those are prime size circle. So that'll be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now 54. It's divisible by 2. Start my first prime. 2 times 27. 2 is prime size circle it. 27 is not divisible by 2, but it's divisible by 3. 3 times 9. 3 is prime size circle it. And 9 is 3 times 3. And both those are prime size circle it. So we got 2 times 3, well, 3 threes. So then our LCM. We'll start with our first prime, which is 2. And I'm looking for the greatest number of 2's on any single line. There's 2 of them here, 1 of them here, so the greatest number of 2's on any single line is 2 of them. Notice I'm not counting how many there are total. I'm looking for the greatest number on any single line. Now I go to my 3. There's 2 3's here, and there's 3 3's here. So the greatest number of 3's on any single line is 3. So I have three threes. Uh, two four times twenty seven would be one hundred eight. So I'm going to rewrite each one of these with a new denominator. Again, you have to figure out what to multiply by the top and bottom. To get, go from thirty six to one hundred eight, we multiply by three, so I have to multiply the top part by three. On this one, I multiply the bar, bar, bottom part by 2, so I multiply the top part by 2. So that gives us 15 over 108 minus 2 over 108. 15 minus 2 is 13, so we've got 13 over 108. And that, I don't think, simplifies. 13 is prime, and I don't think 13 goes into that. So that would be your answer. Okay, let's see uh, next topic. Um, order of operations. Grab a drink here. Hmm. Now, order of operations is when you run across a math problem, what do you do first? And, um, you know, if you were to go start your car uh, and drive, what would you do? Well, first thing is you uh, put your key in. Then you um, turn, the key, turn the motor on, turn the key over. Uh, then you put your, um, your foot on, uh, 
on a um, the brake, and you know you go through all those um, those operations. So we got please excuse my dear and Sally. This is a way for us to remember what to do. You look at the first letter of each. P, E, and then M, D, and then A, S. Now the P. The P stands for parentheses. It also stands for brackets. And uh, kind of indirectly, it stands for absolute value. Now, this says to do what's inside the parentheses, what's inside the brackets. It doesn't say get rid of them. A lot of people get confused about that. It just says do what's inside of it. But the absolute value, it does imply there to get rid of the absolute value. E is uh, exponents. E for exponents. MD, you multiply or divide as you encounter either one from left to right. And Aunt Sally, you add or subtract as you encounter either one from left to right. Note if you have a fraction, do the top part completely, do the bottom part completely, then handle the fraction. Okay, so if I had a problem it look like this. 3 minus 4 minus 2 uh, squared um, times 5. Please do what's inside of parentheses. Yeah, we got 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Uh, excuse exponents. Well, here we got 2 squared. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Please excuse my dear. Multiplication division. As you can count either one from left to right. 4 times 5 is 20. And then Aunt Sally. Add or subtract. Well, we saw this earlier positive number and negative number. You ignore the signs. Subtract the smaller from the larger. 20 minus 3 is 17. And the sign of your answer is sign of the original sign of the larger number, which is negative. So our answer is negative 17. Let's say I had um, 20 minus um, 18 to the fifth power divided by um, 8 minus 6 squared. Okay, step one. Um, well, I shouldn't say step one. Please, uh, do what's inside parentheses. Well, we've got 20 minus 18 here. So it'll give us 2. So we've got 2 to the fifth. And we could, if we wanted to, in the same step, we got another set of parentheses, do what's inside of that. 8 minus 6 is 2. So we got 2 squared. Please excuse exponents. 2 to the 5th. That's going to give us 32. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Divided by 2 squared. I'm still doing the exponents. Here's 2 squared. which gives us 4. And then, um, please excuse my dear, multiplication division as I count either one from left to right. Here's 32 divided by 4 gives us 8. And that would be our answer. 
Now that's our that's our order of operations. Now there's some uh, use rational numbers, integers, and real world examples. Um, I'm going to skip over the application problems. Uh, those are more when you start working on them. Um, and I'll talk more about this in a later video, but if you need help, then you, you contact me. Now, gr graded work, I won't help directly on that, so you get down to here and some of this. But, um, I will help, like if you find a problem similar in a book, email that to me and say, hey, I, can't, I don't know how to work this problem. I'll work it in a YouTube video and send it back to you. Uh, so that's how you can get additional help to help you understand the different uh, homework problems. I don't care how many times you email me. Uh, that's why I'm here. Okay, evaluate variable expressions. That's right here. Kind of goes hand in hand with the order of operations. Evaluate variable expressions. Step one, replace all variables with sets of parentheses. Step two, plug in uh, the uh, numbers to be evaluated for into the parentheses. And then step three is simplify using the order of operations. Example, if I have x squared y uh, minus um, x, y, z to the third. And they tell us we're going to plug in x equals negative 1. We'll plug in y is equal to 3 and z is equal to uh, negative 2. Our first step is we go through and replace all of our variables with sets of parentheses. So I'm going to have parentheses squared times parentheses minus, mm, that's nice, mm. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, replace your uh, variables. Why is that flashing? Okay, no reason. Replace your variables with sets of parentheses. So where my x was, I put in parentheses. Where my y was, I put in parentheses. The second power carries down, and there's still multiplication between these. Minus x, y, z to the third. So I write it down exactly like it was, except for replace the variables with parentheses. Now step two, you want to plug in the numbers they give you. They tell us to plug in negative one for x. So put negative one there, negative one here. Y is three, so put three here, three here. And z was negative two. Well, first off, I noticed that I got a um, shortcut over here. So I've got negative 1 squared times 3. Negative parentheses negative becomes a positive. And everything else carries down. This makes our problem simple before we go on. Please, uh, do what's inside parentheses. Nothing to do inside parentheses. Excuse. Exponents. Well, here's a negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1. Remember, a negative times a negative is positive. One times one is one. So we got one times three plus one times three times negative two to the third. I'm still on the excuse part. Negative two to the third. Exponent only affects what's to its immediate left unless there's parentheses and it affects everything inside the parentheses. Negative two to the third. Negative two times itself three times. 
Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times another negative 2 gives us negative 8. So everything else carries down, and that gives us negative 8. My dear, multiplication division has encountered either one from left or right. Here's 1 times 3, which is 3. And while we're at it, here's another multiplication, 1 times 3, which is 3. And I'll bring everything else down. We're still doing the multiplication division. Here's 3 times negative 8. Uh, that gives us negative 24. And then add or subtract, Aunt Sally. Um, well, these are different signs, so we'll subtract smaller from larger. 24 minus 3 is 21. And the sign of the answer is sign of the larger number, which was negative. So we'll have a negative 21. And that's our answer. Now, simplifying variable expressions. Let me grab a drink here. Let's say um, I went to the store today, saw some apples there. Let's say I had two apples, ignoring the fact that I can't draw an apple, that's an apple. If I had two apples in my cart, if I put five more apples in there, so two apples, five apples. How many apples am I going to have? Well, I'll have seven apples. The principle of this is, is that these are like items whatever they are. Uh, these are both apples. Then you can add or subtract the numbers that's in front. So 2 plus 5 gives you 7. But well, you see that in algebra. If I have 2x plus 5x, notice that these are like items. They look exactly the same. If they look exactly the same, then you can add or subtract the numbers in front of them. 2 plus 5 gives us 7. So we got 7x. Now we're going to see this uh, principle applies throughout this course. Later on we'll be dealing with um, with eyes, imaginary numbers. Don't worry about what that is. It doesn't matter. Are these alike? Yeah, they're both eyes. So uh, 5 plus 2 is 7 and then we throw an eye on there. Later on we'll be dealing with square roots. You might have a problem that looks like this. Does it matter that you don't know what this means? Well, some of you may, but uh, no, it doesn't. Is this like this? Yeah, they're alike, aren't they? They both both look the same, which means you add or subtract the numbers in front. 2 plus 5 is 7, square root of x. And then that would be your answer. Now, that's the principle of um, simplifying uh, variable expressions. Besides the obvious of um, combining your... Um, numbers, adding, subtracting, all the things above. Now they start talking um, in chapter 3. It's kind of what 3, 1 through 3, 3 is about, is solving uh, equations. So let's talk about that. And then we'll talk about uh, inequalities. Let me clear this off. And I'll still leave time at the end if you have any questions. I don't think anybody's actually on, but um, I never can really tell if somebody signs on while I'm, while I'm uh, just talking. Uh, note on solving linear equations. Um, at any point, combine like terms and combine numbers. That's no particular step. You do that anywhere. Step one, get rid of parentheses. We do this via the distributive property. Step two, get rid of fractions. And we multiply by the LCM of all the denominators. Step three, get everything with an X on one side, numbers on the other side. 
When I say everything with an X, numbers on the other side, I'm talking about terms. So I'm talking about your variable terms, the terms that have variables. And I'm talking about your constant terms, just your, your numbers, like 5 or 7. Step 4, divide both sides by the number in front of the X. This is the coefficient. So we're dividing both sides by a coefficient. Okay, so let's take a look at the examples. We got 7x minus 1 equals 13. Now I'm going through those four steps. Step 1 says to get rid of uh, parentheses. Don't have any. Step 2 says get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Step 3 says get everything with an x on one side and numbers on the other side. So I'm going to take this negative 1 I'm going to move it to the right side. Now when you move anything across your equals, your sign changes. So the negative 1 becomes a positive 1. And uh, combine numbers in any step. 13 plus 1 is 14. And then step 4 is to divide both sides by a number in front of the x, the coefficient. So I divide both sides by 7. So 7's would cancel and we get x is equal to 2. Now let's go look at one with parentheses. Okay. Um, step one, get rid of parentheses. Now the distributive property is when you have a number or variable right in front of the parentheses. Uh, them being next to each other indicates multiplication. So we're going to take 8, multiply times x, and we'll take 8, multiply times negative 2. So 8 times x is 8x. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. At any step, combine together like terms, combine together numbers. Negative 16 plus 5 is negative 11. Step 2, get rid of fractions, don't have any. Step 3, get everything with an x on one side, numbers on the other side. So I'll move the 7x to the left side, and I'll move the negative 11 to the right side. Again, anytime you take anything across your equals, your sign changes. So the positive 7x becomes a negative 7x. The negative 11 becomes a positive 11. Some of you may have learned that differently, where you had like a plus 11 underneath both sides or to the side of each. Um, it really is just much easier to just think when you move anything across your equals, your sign changes. 8x minus 7x is 1x or x. And since x is by itself here, we don't have to do uh, step 4. Now let's take a look at one with a fraction. Let's say we got 1 6 x minus 5 twelfths equals 1 half x. Now step 1 says get rid of parentheses. I'm just again following these steps. Get rid of parentheses. Uh, I don't have parentheses. Step 2, get rid of fractions. Multiply by the LCM of all the denominators. Now here we got the LCM of 6, 12, and 2 all of our denominators. Now I'm going to do the prime factorization of each number. That's that tree break broke tree breakdown that we looked at earlier. So you can do that or if you can just see it then you can just write it. Some people can see the LCM directly. 6 is 2 times 3. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And 2 is already prime so it just remains 2. Now I start with my first prime, 2. I'm looking for the greatest number of 2's in a single line. There's 1 here, there's 2 here, and there's 1 here. So the greatest number of 2's in a single line is 2. Then I go to my next prime, 3. I'm looking for the greatest number of 3's in a single line. There's 1 here, 1 here, and none here, so it would be 1. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, so our LCM would be 12. 
And that says we multiply by the LCM of all the denominators. So we're going to multiply everything by 12. Now when I say everything, I'm talking about what's separated by pluses, minuses, and equals. So we multiply times uh, this 1 6x. Now here's a minus. So we multiply it by the 5 twelfths. Here's an equals. So we multiply it by the 1 half x. So again, you multiply it by what's separated by pluses, minuses, and equals. Now 12 and 6 are both divisible by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 12 and 12 are both divisible by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 12 divided by 12 is 1. And 2 and 12 are both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we'll have 2 times 1, 2x, minus 1 times 5, 5, equals 6 times 1, 6x. And we got rid of our, our fractions. Now step 3 says to get everything with an x on one side and numbers on the other side. Doesn't matter which side you get it to, but I'll take all the x's to the left side and I'll take the number, the constant term to the right side. Remembering when you move anything across or equals, your sign changes. So the positive 6x becomes a negative 6x. The negative 5 becomes a positive 5. 2x minus 6x is negative 4x equals 5. And last step, divide both sides by a number in front of your x. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. And so we're going to get x is equal to negative 5 fourths. And that's our answer. <coughs> okay, let me clear that off. Now, our next thing is talking about solving inequalities. And before we can really get into that, we need to talk about some, some basics. You're going to have three forms. And I'm going to do it with three examples. You're going to have x is less than 3. Actually, what are we talking about here? Uh, properties. Okay, we'll just have two, two forms. Um, later on, we'll add on a third one. And x is greater than the number. So here's your two possibilities. Now you may have a, a bar underneath here, entering uh, like here, that says greater than or equal to. Um, and we'll talk about the difference between those. We have something called set builder notation. Set builder notation is probably the easiest one. You put curly brackets, you put an X with a vertical bar, and then whatever your answer was. Like that. Now this vertical bar reads such that. So this would read, uh, curly brackets uh, indicate the, the set of all X values such that X is less than 3. Now over here. Set building notation, you put curly brackets, you put X with a vertical bar. You don't even have to remember what that vertical bar represents because said building notation is always the same way. And then whatever our answer is, and then closing curly bracket. Now, interval notation is a little bit harder. People struggle with this one. When you got a less than, it's going to negative infinity. And then uh, three is our largest end. So you have two items here. You have your smallest and your largest. Now negative infinity represents a small number we can never reach. Now we'll put a parentheses on that. And over here we'll put a parentheses. The only time you ever put a bracket on a number is when there's a line underneath. Now five, greater than five. We'll have five and then we'll have an infinity. Greater than always have this positive infinity on the right side. Less than always has negative infinity on the left side. Now we'll put a parentheses here. You can never reach infinities. Now specifically, this is a greater than or equal to. There's a line underneath. If you have a line underneath, then it's a bracket. So that's how you tell. No line parentheses, line bracket. And then we have our graph. 
Graph is pretty easy if you have interval notation. Parentheses on the three, parentheses on the three. And then you shade whichever way it's opening. It's open to the left, so I shade the left. Now here, bracket on the five, bracket on the five. And you notice the bracket is opening up in the same direction. And then whichever way it's opening is where you shade. So I'm going to shade to the right. And those would be our graphs. Now let's talk about the steps, and then we'll take a look at a couple examples. Solving linear inequalities. Note, at any step, combine like terms and combine numbers. Step one. Get rid of parentheses. We do this via the distributive property. Step two, get rid of fractions. We multiply by the LCM of all the denominators. Step three, get everything with an X on the left side, numbers on the right side. And step four, divide both sides by the number in front of the x, the coefficient. Note, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you flip an equality symbol. So let's take a look at some examples of this. Let's say I got 5 times x minus 1 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. Step 1, get rid of parentheses. Distributive property. We're going to take this 5 and we'll multiply times each term in here. Let's we'll separate by pluses and minuses. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Everything else carries down. At any step, combine together... Uh, like terms, numbers. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Like terms where we have the same variable to the same power. We saw some of those earlier, like combining 3x plus 5x. Okay, step 2, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Step 3, get everything with an x on the left side, numbers on the right side. Just like before, when we took a number across an equals, the sign changed. When you take a number across the inequality uh, symbol, the sign changes. So the negative 3 becomes a positive 3. Combine numbers in a step. 7 plus 3 is 10. And last uh, step, divide both sides by number in front of your x. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. And then we've got x is greater than or equal to 2. Now set building notation. Curly brackets, x to the vertical bar, and whatever our answer was. Interval notation. It's greater than, so it's going to positive infinity. Infinities always have parentheses on them. Specifically, it's a greater than or equal to. There's a line underneath. Remember, when you have a line underneath, you put a bracket on the number. And then our graph. Bracket on 2, bracket on 2. And you shade whichever way it's opening. It's open to the right, so I shade to the right. And those would be my, my different forms. Let's take a look at a fraction. Let's see. 2 thirds x minus 5 is less than uh, 1 um, half x, I guess. Okay, first step, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Multiply everything by the LCM of all our denominators. We've got 3 and 2, and the LCM that would be 6. Same as before, what do we multiply by? What, by what separate by pluses, minuses, and inequality symbols? So 2 thirds x, here's a minus, so then we multiply 6 times a 5, 
Here's an equality symbol. So then we multiply 6 times 1 half x. 6 and 3 are both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 6 and 2 are both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, so we've got 4x minus 30 is less than uh, 3 times 1, 3x. Uh, step 3. Get everything with an x on the left side, numbers on the right. So I'll take this 3x, move it to the left side. I'll take this negative 30, move it to the right side. Again, you move anything across uh, inequality, your sign changes. So a positive 3x becomes a negative 3x. The negative 30 becomes a positive 30. 4x minus 3x is 1x or x, so we've got x is less than 30. Set builder. Put curly brackets, put an x with a vertical bar, and then whatever your answer was. It's a less than, so it's going to negative infinity. Less than always goes negative infinity. Negative infinity always has parentheses on it. There's no line underneath. Line underneath means you put a bracket, otherwise you put a parentheses. Parentheses on 30, parentheses on 30. And then you shade, whichever way it opens. It's open left, so I shade left. And that bear graph. Now what you'll see, let me clear this off, is that if you have a problem, where you're working a problem down, these indicate steps you can't see, And you get down to this point. To get x by itself, we would divide both sides by negative 5. But our note says if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you flip your inequality symbol. And what that means is that greater than or equal to becomes a less than or equal to. And so then this will become x is less than or equal to negative 2. Set builder, we put x with a vertical bar, then whatever our answer was. It's a less than, so it's going to negative infinity. Infinities always have parentheses. Specifically, it's a less than or equal to. Whenever you have the line underneath, remember you put a bracket. And then graph-wise, bracket on negative 2, bracket on negative 2. And you shade whichever way it's opening. It's open left, so I shade left. And those would be our different forms of our answers. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. And I just uh, want to welcome you to the course and, and want to wish you good luck. And if you find yourself struggling, feel free to contact me. That's, that's why I'm here.